european sunscreens are better than american sunscreens this is something most vendors will not tell you trust me even if they know they will not tell you you may end up looking like a ghost this is a glass this is a sponge so this is how a physical sunscreen works hello guys welcome back to my channel and i hope that you guys are doing great so in today's video we'll be talking about sunscreens yes so the first thing you need to know when um, trying to purchase a sunscreen is choosing the one that is perfect for your skin needs and matches your budget yes very important it matches your budget for the sake of continuity you don't want to have to keep skipping the application of your sunscreen because you are worried about the cost of having to purchase another one. So you use today, you don't use tomorrow because you're like, when this thing finishes, you're like, see money to buy another one. The thing is, we are all looking for something a little bit unique when it comes to sunscreen. You might have an oily skin and you definitely want a sunscreen that will give you that matte finish on your skin. And you might have a dry skin and you want a sunscreen that will leave that hydrating dewy finish on your skin so make sure that um, you purchase a sunscreen that is based on your skin needs your skin type because i don't want you to just reach out and buy whatever sunscreen is popular online because different products work differently on different skin types so be sure that um you are getting the one that will, that is perfect for your skin type and um no matter the sunscreen you choose to buy the most important thing is to make sure that you are buying a broad spectrum sunscreen a broad spectrum sunscreen is a sunscreen that protects you from both uva and uvb rays uva rays causes premature aging while uvb rays causes sunburn and cancer so you want to make sure that your sunscreen is giving you maximum protection so let's jump right into the things uh, you need to take into consideration when getting a sunscreen and the things that these vendors will not tell you okay number one no sunscreen offers you 100 percent protection from the sun rays yes there is nothing like that it does not exist the most important thing to know when um to know about sunscreens is that it should never be your only protection against the sun Try as much as possible to further protect yourself by avoiding the sun during peak hours. The peak hours of the sun is usually from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But if you must go under the sun within this period, please use your umbrella. You can get something, something like this. This can fit into your handbag. I got this for about 2,000 naira. If you don't want to use an umbrella, you can use a hat. I don't have, have a hat. Or you can use a sunshade personally if i'm going to a place like the market where i can't be carrying umbrella up and down before i go and blind somebody's child i apply um my sunscreen correctly then i use a scarf this is not the scarf i use but i use a big scarf around my head like this then i follow suit with my sunshade so you can see this is like a three factor authentication a three step protection my sunscreen my scarf my scarf and my shade you can see this part of my face is covered from the sun so with this thing the sun has got nothing on me don't rely on sunscreens and go and bathe in the hot sun because sunscreens do not provide 100 percent protection against uv rays then i also need to emphasize the need to apply your sunscreen liberally and evenly yes most of us tend to under apply our sunscreens so we're not getting that adequate protection sunscreen rubs off and wears off over time hence the need to you know you need to reapply every two hours and if you're someone that sweats a lot and you're going for a swim you might need to you know get a water resistant sunscreen always up for spf 30 or higher spf stands for sun protection factor and spf protects you against uvb rays the pa plus you see on some sunscreens means the strength of uva protection the sunscreen is providing pa plus protects you from uva rays Currently, the highest level of protection you can get from UVA rays is PA++. That's four pluses. If you see PA+, in a sunscreen, and you see PA+, 
four pluses in another sunscreen you may want to get this one because the strength of protection it is providing is definitely higher i have one here with me so this is the skin aqua um, sunscreen i believe this is a korean brand and you can see the pa plus plus i don't know if you can see it the pa4 pluses on it it has four pluses and more often than not sunscreens with pa plus four pluses are broad spectrum sunscreens and um, spf protects you against uvb rays while the pa plus 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 protects you against uv rays do you understand some brands do not use the pa plus symbol instead they use ppd so where you see a sunscreen that has a ppd of 16 and above it is equivalent to a sunscreen that has the pa with four pluses do you understand so you want to opt for spf 30 and higher so a sunscreen's spf is a measure of how well it protects you from getting burnt in the sun but a higher spf does not necessarily mean better protection from sun damage in fact choosing a sunscreen based on only spf the number of spf can lead you away from your skin goals which simply means that a high spf can give you a false sense of security um people often mistakenly think that they cannot get sunburned or they can be out in the sun for much longer than it is safe if they put an spf 100 on their skin so let me break this down for you and the SPF 15 blocks 93% of UVB radiation. And SPF 30 blocks 97% of UV radiation. And SPF 50 blocks 98% UV radiation. And SPF 100 blocks 99%. So the difference between SPF 50 and SPF 100 is 1%. The difference between SPF 30 and SPF 100 is 2%. Do you understand? So it is important to remember that SPF measurements are done in a laboratory setting where a precise amount of sunscreen is applied to, you know, an area, an exposed area of your skin, and it is exposed to a controlled light source. So when a sunscreen is confirmed to be SPF 100 in a laboratory, it is hard to know exactly how that sunscreen will perform in the outside world because no one can control the intensity of the sun. The sun can be hot today and tomorrow it is burning like hell. So this is why it is advised that you apply your sunscreen every two hours. But it is not something you should stress yourself about, in my opinion. If you apply your sunscreen correctly in the morning and it is not feasible to apply your sunscreen every two hours, you are better off than someone who does not apply a sunscreen at all. As long as you are not bathing in the sun and you are not facing a window where UV rays can penetrate, you know, and get to your skin, or you are not driving, then you can get away with skipping reapplication sometimes because these UV rays can actually penetrate your home, <laughs> your home windows, your office window, your windscreen when you're driving. So you have to be sure that you are not exposed to any of these. But if you are outside, close to a window or you're driving then reapplication is something you may not want to skip yes so for the sake of convenience you can just get a sunscreen spray put it in your bag probably set a timer a two hours timer from the last time you applied it because you can get very busy and forget these things during the day so it's easy to forget yeah just get a spray pam, 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 pam. spray it on your face then you drop it okay so um but if you're treating any form of hyperpigmentation acne scars dark spots dull skin and so on you need to take reapplication very seriously yes so that your progress is not reversed by the sun most sunscreens will recommend that you apply like 20 minutes before you step out of your house yes you should try to do this but if you cannot do it if it's not feasible don't worry there are ways to go around these things. Apply your sunscreen before you apply your lotion. I mean, your body lotion on your skin. I'm sure before you moisturize your skin, wear your clothes, brush your hair, and do all of that, it would have been 20 minutes. Yes. Even if it's not up to 20 minutes, don't worry. Even if it is 18 minutes, 15 minutes, don't worry. You are better off than someone who did not apply a sunscreen at all. Skincare should not be so much of a headache, right? It shouldn't be. So do what you have to do, but stay protected. 
at all times okay number three sunscreen with actives i have come across products like this like this and i wonder how they got into the market obviously the skincare industry in nigeria is highly unregulated so anything goes but that does not mean you should gamble with your skin too my dear sunscreens are not meant to come with actives especially skin lightening or skin whitening actives the job of a sunscreen is to protect you from sun damage so how can you be whitening so how can the sunscreen be whitening you or lightening you at the same time if you have hyperpigmentation you can introduce some melanin inhibiting products into your skincare routine or maybe alpha butene kojic acid and all that which can be in form of toners serums face moisturizers essence allow your sunscreen to do the work it was formulated to do it was meant to protect let your sunscreen protect you against uv damage number four European sunscreens are better than American sunscreens. This is something most vendors will not tell you. Trust me, even if they know, they will not tell you. A recent study has showed that um, many of the American sunscreens labeled broad spectrum do not block UV rays as effectively as European sunscreens do. Australia has the best sunscreens in the world. And I think this is due to the fact that Australia has the highest rates of skin cancer, skin cancer in the world. So the government of Australia has the strictest requirements for sunscreen. I know you guys might want to check out some Australian sunscreen. Okay, don't worry, I got you. Here are some Australian sunscreens you might want to try. Have the banana boat, have the blue lizard, they will have the bondi and sand. In an upcoming video, I will do a honest review on all the sunscreens I have tried and I recommend the best ones for you, okay? So the best way of supporting me as a content creator is to please like my videos. Please like this video because the more likes this video gets, the more YouTube will, you know, distribute it across this channel, okay? So from the bottom of my heart, please like this video. Thank you so much. Number five. Children can use sunscreen from as low as one year. Yes, as long as you have started exposing your child to the sun, you can use a sunscreen on their skin to protect them from the harmful effects of the sun. And no, do not use your sunscreen on your child. Don't use your sunscreen on them. There are sunscreens for kids. Get the sunscreen for kids. You can twin with your child when it comes to clothing. You can wear matching clothes, matching shoes, matching hats and all that. But please, when it comes to skincare products, please do not do twinning with them. Don't twin with them. Please, if you want me to kneel down and beg you, I will kneel down and beg you. Please, don't, don't, do not do it. Don't do it. The sunscreen you are getting for them needs to be a broad spectrum sunscreen for kids for kids and you need a broad spectrum sunscreen obviously for adequate protection the fact that you are using a sunscreen on your child does not mean you should then expose your child's skin to the sun and so yeah you are protected oh yeah go here into the sun and burn no always wear them protective clothing like i said earlier sunscreen does not offer 100 percent protection okay number six Physical sunscreens are better than chemical sunscreens. So we have two types of sunscreens. We have physical or mineral sunscreen and we have chemical sunscreen. So what is the difference between these two types of sunscreens? Okay, physical sunscreens work by creating a physical barrier on your skin that shields it from the sun rays. They sit on your skin and block UV rays from damaging your skin. Most physical or mineral sunscreens are formulated with um, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Zinc oxide sunscreens are often recommended for people with skin sensitivities and they are gentle enough to use on children. The downside to mineral or physical sunscreen is that they can be difficult to spread on the skin and they tend to leave behind a noticeable white cast and um, you may end up looking like a ghost yes <laughs> so but there are newer formulations of physical sunscreens that do not leave a white cast i'll do my research on them and come share with you guys all right so chemical sunscreens chemical sunscreens on the other hand do not sit on your skin they, they don't block uv rays like physical sunscreens they absorb uv rays before your skins you know get to soak them up 
let me give you a visible illustration of what i'm trying to say this is a glass this is a glass this is a sponge so this is how a physical sunscreen works physical sunscreen works like a glass that shields your skin that blocks the uv rays from getting to your skin while the sponge is your chemical sunscreen that absorbs the uv rays so that it doesn't get to your skin do you understand the difference glass sponge blocks shields absorbs do you understand in most cases chemical sunscreens do not leave behind a white cast which makes them easier for any skin tone or, or skin color to wear because it literally vanishes into your skin generally chemical sunscreens are easy to apply because they absorb well and tend to leave a smooth feel without you know feeling sticky and most importantly they do not leave a white cast they do not leave behind a white cast so the last but not the least today sunscreens expire it is true most sunscreens do not have expiration dates but that doesn't mean they do not expire sunscreens just like any other skincare products will definitely expire if your sunscreen has no expiration date, turn to the back of the product where the ingredient list is. You will see a symbol like this. This symbol is called the PAO. PAO stands for period after opening. Sometimes you will see six months, sometimes you will see 12 months. This simply means that when you see a symbol like this, it means that the product will no longer be effective six months after opening it. And when you see 12 months, it means that that product will no longer be effective 12 months after opening it. So please, sunscreens expire. Sunscreens do expire. If you have watched this video to this point, trust me, you are fully armed with everything it takes to make a good decision when you're buying a sunscreen. On your next purchase, you know what to look out for. Okay, so I'll stop here today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you got value from this video. Please do not forget to like this video as this will mean a lot to me. If this is your first time here, thanks for watching. Do not leave without subscribing to my channel and check out my other videos on my channel. See you guys in my next video. I love you all. Bye for now.